we can start this story anywhere because really all roads lead to the same place. We got rid of the royalty, but being human, we didn't realize how much of the systems of royalty we kept. These systems turned a monarchy into an oligarchy, not a democracy, as we've been calling it. When we got rid of royalty and monarchy, we wanted to get rid of imperialism. Sadly, hundreds of years later, all of our larger problems today are because of the imperialist systems that we're still based on. And yes, we know saying the word problem is a problem. That's part of Babylon, and we'll get to that later. So when people say that, they're, that they want just one little miracle solution, but there isn't one, for all of these problems, it'd be more accurate to say that there is one root to the problems, imperialist to colonialist systems, and, it, and that without the imperialism, all the fabulous choices for solutions are available. Now, in the information age, this can all be sorted. The two systems that we take most for granted in our society that we think are the foundation of what we think is our anti-imperialist democracy is voting and money. They're actually imperialist systems, the opposite of what we think they are. Stop and think about that because it has, this has had people caught up for thousands of years and the best we've come up with is to say or money is the root of all evil. Maybe coveting money is the root of all evil. Or maybe money is the root of evil. And, we kind of, and then we kind of rebranded imperialism as nationalism. As if imperialism wasn't about being a nation. And as though we didn't get our information originally from the imperialists. So... At this point, most people receive this all as new information. This causes a human function that we call the change process. You will either feel denial, sadness, anger, happiness. You may feel the urge to bargain with me or question all of this information, as well as start testing this on your own. That's what we're hoping for. Some people will feel immobilization and depression as they think and feel their way through all of the amount of information that this must entail. This is for several reasons. Because we call it by a name we have pride in. Because our egos step in when we realize we didn't learn this in our over a decade of formal education. Because of the natural phenomenon of Babylon that we'll get to later, and because of the additional suppression of information by natural phenomenon of the pre-information age and probably on purpose too. Although blame at this point is a fallible human. So, all right, so let's go back here. A monarchy controls its subjects by denying consent, either by means of abuse or by indirect means. The primary indirect means of controlling your subjects is by having an imperialistic money system. The best subterfuge for optimum output of your subjects is elections as they still are here in America today. Rigged. Here, some of you are already starting to see that the money stuff, I mean, most of us have come across a decision in our lives where money was the determining factor when we know it should not have been. Maybe you've already been questioning or fretting. Don't fret. It's not your fault. Repeat this until you understand. The elaborate international monetary system of tax, loans, interest, credit, debt, etc. ad nauseum is math meant to confuse the common person by infiltrating into all of their consent situations instead of used to work out when and how to consent. But the voting thing, most people say at this point, no way is this, no way is this BS. Even though it's easy enough for me to say, switch the systems, we have them backwards between voting and, and money. Well, 
as you may know, even though we have this colonialized industrial intensive education, we didn't always. Not when this country started, nor did royalty often educate its subjects. Without formal education, the general person mostly only knows addition and subtraction math because it relates to life. So addition math seems trusted when the monarchy offers an election. Which land baron would you prefer by way of addition math? You think you have choice, but you don't actually have consent. These are two words for the same thing. More on that in the Babylon topic. The big indicators here are that you don't have a no vote or a no to the system vote. The royalty can offer their people selections, all of whom they are okay with being barons, so your pick affects none. They can let people pick their own rulers, knowing that human condition is in their favor. People who want to be in charge are always going to volunteer for the people to pick them from. As they are the most susceptible to corruption, power, and greed, this bothers the royalty none. Those people rulers, even if they're better than others, are still being ruled by royalty regardless, also making them easily plied by corruption, power, and greed. Lastly, no matter who people pick, they're still picking rulers, so they're still going to be slaves. The straight addition math we trusted of the reality of resources should apply to money, not voting. Because that is all money represents without a monarchy or oligarchy in the way. Whereas our elaborate math system the royalty used to take our consent away with money can apply conversely to get our consent back so that we can give it. A consenting voting procedure uses the decision making process that is represented by the elaborate math. All right, do you feel like you just found out Santa isn't real? Well, we cannot have our autonomy in this system. It can take people years of getting stuck through the change process to understand this. Our goal is to get people up to woke with some haste and ease. It will take your consent, which as we just described, most of us don't know anything about something we currently only think of as for sex and surgery, and not even then very well. That's not your fault either. Repeat until you understand that. It will take time. The rat race is a subsystem of the imperialistic monetary system, a mechanism that suppresses our abilities, the actual time, and to be able to use that time optimally. Consent applies to everything we do. And it includes our autonomy, the ability to function individually in all those things which are such by nature, the ability to have real choice, both by the personal decision-making process and by the outward function of society mirroring that process. This is available now in the information age. An opposite to what we use as majority rule Yes, that includes Robert's rules and the entire structure of all of our groups that are hierarchical, which is all of them. We know it and we do it anyway. It looks like a pyramid. The phenomenon of being born into something because we've always done it in that way and the pernicious nature of the pyramid. We can't see another way to do it and we don't talk about it. This is referenced as the veil or curtain when people talk about it. The money is is under the veil too, concealed by the curtain, like in The Wizard of Oz. The autonomy part is not needing any of these groups, or the veil for that matter, in order to be accounted for. It's contended that we like to talk numbers with people, so that's why money as it is, is as it is, And it satisfies us. However, when we're using math as a language and with other languages, this need will be met elsewhere. 
Have you ever heard that Americans are notoriously bad at story problems and math tests? Well, algebra applies to consent. And although we learn algebra, we don't learn it related to life. And we learn to hate math by sheer overload of it not seeming to relate to life. We often learn the scientific method also, which applies to consent. We don't learn it related to life. <laughs> we learn it applied to lab work and apply it only and sometimes ineffectively there. And we lose our interest because it seems to not relate to everyday life. We have a chance to learn actual decision-making consent processes in busyness college classes. If we get the right teacher and the right book, again, we don't learn it related to life. We learn it applied to money. Basically a double whammy there. We suffer from a lot of separation, kind of like separation anxiety within humans, except all of us as a society with our stuff and our systems, our groups, thoughts, and distractions. When they appear separated or we've made efforts to separation separate them, we really just suffer. The math, as it's related to our money system and our voting system, is definitely a good example of that. For some of us, it may be foggy for a while when, they're, when we're in this middle ground of new information. For this, I refer people to my grandparents' generation. They had a saying that was, go as far as you can see, and then see to go farther. In the 20th century, we had found the future was looking bleak. Then the information age we had been building was able to make the future possible again. I can honestly say the view is beautiful from here. Repeat until understood, especially for the homicidal and suicidal folks. In the last few decades, actually a lot of people have gotten this far, and the thing that helped us get there is the thing that is now in our way. We can't see our missing consent components, and we can't see how to just get rid of money. Money being the evil. Okay, so how about we get rid of the imperialistic monetary system because it promotes coveting from which all people suffer as evil and start money that is meant for the freedom of people to freely transact goods and services. Non-imperialist communities have accomplished this and with the information age, we can make that a reality for everyone pretty much overnight. Seriously, by using a people's direct money system based on addition math that we eventually probably won't even need, we can actually get it out of the way and, and get on with all the rest of this stuff. During the first and current biological international lockdown, the Bank of China is performing their financial transactions in just this way. You think of functioning this way at home or in a family unit. And that is how easy it is to see the new system. And that is how easy the new system is. With consent voting as the new system, the information is disseminated or delivered to everyone, put into a format that replicates best good decision procedures, the people having best good decision procedures, aka consent awareness and skills, can mentally, emotionally, and physically align with the issues and therefore the other people if they're presented with consent questions. In other words, we are all arguing even though we mostly agree because of Babylon, which we cover in the next paragraph now, and universal truths. Universal truths are represented on the current voting bank at Gov by Us, the website. Yes, that means you can go start right now. And when everybody does it, we will have effectively changed the voting system. Now there is a cascade of other things to change that will come after that. And that might seem difficult, but fear not. Really, repeat this until understood. We are not going to cover much of that here, except to say that some of the most drastic things will fall away immediately. Some stuff is obvious, and a lot of it, we are really close. We really just need to, like, side step, just one step sideways, and then there's a bunch of beautiful stuff that we can cherry pick from after that.
Thanks, Information Age. <laughs> Apologies to all who have come before us and left in this. But yes, most things can be run smoothly for most of the world. And you, it's not New World Order. It's a new order to the world. Okay, Babylon. It refers to the tower that's referred to in biblical references. And that refers to the phenomenon of how refer can be used so many times, somehow hopefully adding to the clarity of the topic. We say Babylon and on and on and on because it describes a lot about what can happen with language in its linear forms. Unlike how we think of a whole idea at once, where we're limited to linear as well as limited in dialect, vocabulary, mutual definitions, time, environment, experiences, and capacity. I like the biblical Pentecost, book of Acts, a version of what is meant by the falling of Babylon. When all people understand each other and stop blaming people for the nature of language. Recognizing the duplicity of language as well. And Babylon fell. It's more the lighting up instead of falling of the tower. So that it's open to the people as a library. The many languages together for the same purpose. Instead of the monoculture that we might imagine today of nationalist imperialism. 